look at that and look at us. And here we are. It's podcast time. We did it. We made it. And we're not even late. Not even a little bit. Nope. First try. <laughs> first try. Hello, guys. Hey, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How are you doing? We we did it. Yeah. Look at we did look at us. We All made right. It. Yay. Yeah. Guys, congratulations. It's the first <laughs> Switch 2 leak of the year. Woo! I think. Anyway. It probably is. It's the first one that matters. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll say that. Yeah, this one seems uh pretty pretty legitimate. Yes. Uh, uh, so, of course, we're going to spin it into a whole episode. Yes, because that's what we do here. And I'm sure you'll hear a lot more Switch 2 leaks this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll break it down and tell you what we think and what's going to happen. Also, there's other news, right? Yeah, there's some other things. There's a lot of other about. news. Yeah, there's a lot of things we can... Like, what's happening? Tell me what's uh, happening. Well, the producer of Final Fantasy 16 has a bone to pick with a certain name we've given to his specific genre. Okay, that is true. Uh, uh, we had a little discourse on that on the Twitch yesterday, people okay. were, or two days ago, people were asking me about that. Um, we got news on the, of course, the big Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Uh, this time, Sony might be the one in trouble. <gasps> oh. Uh, Oopsies. We got a new DBZ game announced that people are losing their goddamn minds over. Um, a, somebody has been banned from Smash Brothers. I think you all know who. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and many more. The only Smash character with just a name. Yeah. Oh, did the intro not play a sound at all? That's possible. Uh, oh well. Quiet intro. Yeah. <laughs> Oopsies. Um, but first, we always like to talk about free games you're getting. Oh, we got a free game. Yeah. Uh, f- what am I getting? Metroid Fusion is coming to Switch Online. I saw this, and this trailer that they have is awesome. Yeah. They have, like, a full-blown trailer yeah, for, for like Metroid a, Fusion. Yeah. Um. So, yes. Uh, Adventure to Planet SR388 as Interstellar Bounty Hunter Samus Aran and Metroid Fusion coming to Nintendo Switch for a Switch Online plus Expansion Pack members uh, March 9th. So, that is Thursday. Apparently, the intro was very loud. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Just like you like it. Just like you love it. Uh, Hope nobody's sleeping or driving. Metroid Fusion, is it the best Metroid game? No, but it's a damn good one. <laughs> what is? Metroid? Super Metroid? It's a toss-up between that and Prime. All right. Prime one. All right, let's say 2D Metroid games. This is up there. Okay. I would, may- I would maybe put it. I, don't I know, think this I- might be my favorite. I, I like Dread a lot. I haven't played Zero Mission yet. Yeah, I haven't played Zero Mission either. Yeah. But I, I know people like really like that game. I know amongst like the Metroid faithful, as they call it, this is like a little looked down upon because it was the first Why? it was the first one to, to specifically tell you where to go. Oh, that's the best part of the game is that it tells you everything. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about well, like, it. It's awesome. Like, especially like Super Metroid, like uh you know, everything you do everything on your own, like everything you find organically. And it was like this big moment of discovery, whereas in Fusion you go to a big computer and Adam tells you, go to this section, lady. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. They do that in Dread a little bit, but yeah. it's it's better when they just straight up tell you. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a lot of spots. Even... All right, there's a lot of spots in Dread where I didn't know where I was going. I was getting a little frustrated. Yeah. But it was fine. I ran around for like an I hour mean, and I figured I it out. I don't think the, the way it's done in Fusion is that egregious. I, I, I was going to say... I still had the same issues in this game. I yeah. was still running around not knowing what to do. But I think part of the problem was it's a mobile game. So I would pick it up. I would play it for a little bit, put it down for like weeks and yeah. then come back to it and be like, ah, I don't know where I am. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but you know, that being said, this is a fantastic game. It was for, at the time they actually made fusion because Nintendo was afraid that nobody was going to like prime. So they're like, we need to make a 2D Metroid game so people still like Metroid. Yeah. Meanwhile, Prime wanted to be in a better game. We got a lot of incredible games on Game Boy Advance. There was there was a weird time period where Game Boy was getting shitty versions of home console games. Yeah. And Game Boy Color also. And then Game Boy Advance came out and it was getting just phenomenal in like some cases, mainline the best versions of yeah. these games it it really yeah. flipped around and yeah. and a lot of them flew under the radar because at the time we were like oh it's the handheld version yeah. it's going to be shitty it's going to be like perfect dark <laughs> <laughs> but then it ended up being great like this yeah 
So uh, definitely check this out, especially if you liked uh, Dread. Yes. Uh, definitely check this out uh, when it does come out. Hopefully, you know, hopefully they release Zero Mission real soon. Uh, M. Skelton in the chat says, so are we going to talk about Mega Man coming to Luna? Is it? And how it's unplayable because of the fucking <laughs> input. Like, okay, well, uh, Amazon Luna. I don't know. Oh, okay. Do you have to... Sh- Why is it unplayable? Because of the input lag. Oh, okay, because you stream it, right? I guess. What is what is it? Mega Man 11? Mega Man 11 is a bad game. <laughs> I've heard people try to defend it. I'm like... Eh. It's really not good. And it looks like a freaking Flash game. Yeah. I, it's disappointing, too. I don't know what you're talking about, honestly. Oh, Mega Man Legacy Collection coming to Luna? That was last May that, that it said that. I don't... I don't well, I don't Mega Man 11, about. yeah, you can play it now. With Prime, do I want to? No, it's not good. Skip it. Not worth it. So, little Capcom the, fell off. While we're on the subject of cloud gaming, this is a little. This is a tangent, but I feel like it's important, and maybe you people at home can help me. Uh, I had my performance review today for, for my nine to five. I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. I, it was a good performance review. <laughs> okay. The review was three minutes. The other forty five minutes of the call was talking about because uh, my boss just got into The Last of Us. Okay. <laughs> Oh, this is good. And this he, is your specialty. He, he finally he broke down and he bought the second one because only the first one is on uh, PlayStation Plus. Okay. Not uh, PlayStation Plus Premium. So he bought it. And we're talking about it and we're going on. And he's like, yeah, you know, the PlayStation's in the basement. And sometimes my daughter comes over with her friends. And like, I can't go in there and play in the basement. So I said, well, you have PlayStation Premium so you could stream the game. Oh, no. And so he's like, <laughs> you, you could do that? Like, so he's all into that. And I said, yeah, if you just Google like how to do it, it'll tell you. I figure as a good employee, I should figure that out and then tell yes. him. Yes, you should. But here's my problem. Okay. Is that, that's not the same thing as remote play, is it? Because No, there's two different things. <laughs> yes, okay. Remote play is playing off of the PlayStation. Is it PS5? Yeah. Playing off of the PlayStation if you're in the house is probably a better idea. Okay. Uh, you can do like a remote. Actually, you can't. No, you can't. You can't do a remote play type thing. Yeah. Okay. No, no. You can do remote play. Yes. You can't do a Game Pass type streaming on PlayStation. You can do it like on a computer or something, well, and it's okay, like yeah. it's like fucked up. And That's weird. what I mean. Yeah. If it, there's there's the better thing is to just straight up do remote play. Okay. And there are third party apps that do it better. Okay. Like you like it doesn't even work right. Okay. Wait. Hold on. He just wants to play The Last of Us on his oh, MacBook. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. You cannot do a Game Pass type thing. Right. The only way to do a Game Pass type streaming mm-hmm. is on the console itself. Okay. Correct so me he- if I'm wrong, chat, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. You if you want to do remote play, you basically need a third party app unless you want to use a PlayStation 5 controller on your fucking iPhone. Well, he's going to do it on his laptop. And I know they make a dedicated remote play app for yeah. Windows and Mac. Okay. So I'll just tell him to do that then. But in yes. that case, does he have to keep the PS5 on? Yes. Okay. In sleep mode, which is shitty. Right. It like turns itself off. Yeah. It yells at you and stuff. So good luck. Okay. But but yes, that's what you have to do. Okay. Because I know one of, the par- one of the perks of PS Plus Premium is is um streaming mm-hmm. is cloud streaming which is, i'm assuming is like game pass on the console though on just on the console yes you Not, can't do it you can't do it on a computer correct okay which is it sucks but i feel like uh if they wanted to compete with game pass seriously they should fix that <laughs> i know they really do and, and also like the apps that you get on like android or ios are bad like, they're yeah. not great the, the controls don't work and shit like you yeah. need to basically use the third party one so it sucks because i am in the same boat i would like to yeah. stream stuff i actually plugged my playstation 5 into the um bedroom tv oh yeah the cable hanging out yeah, hanging yeah. off the ceiling um to play demio that 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 stupid uh it's Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Oh, right. The right, right. tabletop yeah, RPG yeah. thing where you have the little pieces and you move them around. Yeah, yeah. I was playing it in VR and then I I got really 
into it and i was like oh i could beat what we, i played it with wood and fried yeah, biscuits yeah. and we couldn't beat a thing and they got really frustrated and i was like i we could totally beat that and i yeah, yeah. brought it that same day i brought it into my bedroom and played it by myself <laughs> and couldn't beat it again right and i'm probably never playing that game again but i want to get back into like death stranding and stuff and that's gonna uh i guess i'll just leave my playstation plugged into the bedroom but yeah. i i'd much rather remote into it okay but i got like you know the Logitech G Cloud <laughs> and, you know, the Steam Deck and shit, which would be great for yeah. remoting into it, but you need third-party apps. There's no, like, Got PlayStation it. app for doing that, which is super, super for, annoying. Uh, for the Steam Deck? You mean. For the Steam Deck, for Android? Because Remote Play is available, and uh, according according to the official Sony website... Uh, what devices are compatible? Android, smartphones, and tablets, iPhone and iPad, and Windows PC and Mac. So they work, but yeah. you need to use, I think, the PlayStation 5 or 4 controller. Okay. So if I have a Steam Deck, I got to use a PlayStation yes. 4 or 5 <laughs> controller on the fucking yeah. Steam Deck. It's super annoying. Yes. Same thing with an iPhone. Like, why why not just use like a Razer Kishi or something and slap it on there? That, th- they, that would be they super do make, great. They do make a PlayStation branded Razer Kishi. Don't uh, they? I think it's Game Sir. Yeah. But yes, they do have that. Oh, yeah, just... So you need that. Yeah. That's the thing you need. Or you can get one of them clips for your uh, dual sense to clip your phone onto. Does it. Your, what does your boss have? Uh, what do you mean? What de- a mobile device does your phone have? I think he's got an iPhone. An iPhone? Does yeah. he have an iPad? Yes. He also he, he said he was going to do it on his MacBook. Find out what version of iPad he has because I might have a thing okay. for him. Um, Backbone. Okay, it's Backbone, not Game Server. Yeah. Backbone has the PlayStation yes. version. Okay, I should get that. That might solve some of my problems. <laughs> Chiaki is the remote play third party app. I've never heard of that before. I've heard of uh, I've heard of at least one other one. Look, I'm gonna make this real easy for him. I'm just gonna tell him to get the official Sony one. Yeah, have him just Google all these like weird third party. But ones. then he's got to use. I'm sure it's fine. If he's going to use it on a freaking MacBook, Look, t- if he's going to use it on a MacBook, it's probably fine. When I told him he can hook up his PS5 controller to his MacBook, like, I, I couldn't see him, but I can hear his mind explode okay. over the phone. <laughs> I understand. So, all right. I got I got, I got got a report to work on for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Will keeps his job. This is this. L- and my other boss has an Xbox, so I talked to oh. him about that. So I'm okay. I, I, all right. <laughs> LJWVU, thank you for the 20 months. 20 months, wow. Happy Tuesday, Wolf Bros. Hello. Happy hey. Tuesday. Among the Noise, thanks for the Prime subscription. Mikey, two times, thanks for the 10 months. Wolf Bros. Skate720, thanks for the two months. And Ferris Rex, thanks for the 29 whole months. Uh, Bob, you need to do some more research on the PlayStation streaming, my friend. Okay. <laughs> All right, dude. Get You're right shooting on, from the hip. Get here. right on that, Rose. Shooting from the hip at the Wolf Den podcast. Um. All right, let's just uh, let's talk about the fucking what do we got? What do you call it? Uh, the switch to leaks. Switch to leaks. Let's let's do that. Uh, rumors regarding the Nintendo Switch's successor have started to circulate again. This time, thanks to information shared on Reddit's gaming leaks and rumors subreddit. Uh, apparently, the a prominent Chinese leaker that goes by the handle Factory Uncle was banned from a forum right. where they had been sharing leaks and their thread was shut down. Factory Uncle had gained a very strong reputation sharing hardware leaks related to various Switch models that later proved accurate. A post by Factory Uncle seemed to hint at Nintendo's Ninjas making the request. Nintendo's oh, Ninjas no. is in quotes. Um, this has led to speculation that the company is trying to clamp down on Switch two weeks prior to a full reveal. It's worth noting that Factory Uncle is not the same leaker that recently mentioned a more powerful Switch model would be released at the end of the year. If Factory Uncle was shut down to clamp down on leaks, that could lend even more credibility to the rumor. Unfortunately, there's no way of knowing for sure, but if Nintendo really is planning to drop a new console at the end of 2023 or early 2024, an announcement should come sometime before the end of the summer in order to give retailers and fans time to prepare. The Nintendo Switch released six years ago this week, and a new console from the company is an inevitability at this point. While Nintendo has kept quiet about the Switch successor, there are a lot of little hints that things are starting to move uh, forward at the company. 
Uh, Mario Odyssey is more than five years old at this point, and it seems odd that a new 3D Mario game hasn't been mentioned or addressed, even with the Super Mario Brothers movie set to release in theaters next month. The majority of the Nintendo platforms have released alongside a new Mario or Zelda game, and with Tears of the Kingdom coming out in May, a new Mario game would be the perfect launch title for the new system. I, I think that the Mario... I think Mario being silent is very is is a very good indicator that something's cooking. Yeah, because that that's strange. There was a there's oh, I gotta just find it. Like Miyamoto said something about like that a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Like they were interviewing him. They inter- were interviewing him. It was like, what are, what's gonna happen? Like, are you planning on retiring? I was like, no, but you know, after I die, Nintendo will be fine. Yeah, and he like, said that, and he also said he uh, said something about like what's going on with Mario. Well, they asked him, and he just said, "We're always working on new Mario." Games. Yeah, that's all he said. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this article didn't actually say what Factory Uncle said at all. Uh, correct. <laughs> so what the fuck? What did Factory Uncle <laughs> I say? I don't know. This is the like I googled Switch Two leaks, and like there wasn't a lot of information. Surprisingly, Chinese hardware leaker Permaband thread deleted at the request of Nintendo. Well, let's see. Let's dig in deeper into this. Uh, he sadly flew too close to the sun, and the the ninja got to him. Uh, the story before is omitted and I'd like to express my deepest condolences to the factory uncle. Let's discuss it info from the uncle as if it were a message from another channel. Be aware of personal information issues and watch out for the ninjas here. Wow. They keep saying ninjas. <laughs> I, I think that's what like cool. Quote, quote, collectively uh, yes. people refer to uh, Nintendo's like, when they send out cease and desist, like they're the Nintendo ninjas. Yeah. So I, uh, th- that, that's very interesting to me because we always, it, we always collectively call them ninjas. Yeah. Like, like the, the Nintendo lawyers coming after you yeah, and, yeah. and getting cease and desist or whatever. Um, Nintendo sending out their ninjas. And then I heard Kit and Krista mention the room with the ninjas in them <laughs> at Nintendo. And I was like, holy shit, they're real. It's a thing. <laughs> so yeah no it's 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 just more validation that that's a real thing apparently chinese worker who originally leaked the back plate of the switch light leaked the announcement of splatoon oled model and upgraded model announced later this year switch to sex only got delayed but uncle wasn't wrong on new skew itself okay so this uncle has some credibility here what was the rumor? A new and more powerful Switch at the end of the year that'll launch with the second Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC with a graphical upgrade patch. Hmm. That seems... Sus. Yeah. Because why the fuck <laughs> would Pokemon Scarlet and Violet be the the graphical, yeah. you know, like, like, like spearhead of that the console? Just, that sounds like somebody who was so upset with the way it launched Mm -hmm. thinking like, Oh, this should have just been on new hardware. Mm -hmm. It's that that's their way of trying to wish that into existence. I like a cyberpunk situation. I think that this probably was a plan. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, this was probably a plan. And then Nintendo saw how shitty Pokemon Scarlet and Violet looked and how the reception was to it. And Mm -hmm. they're, they're probably like, okay, we need a different, flagship game for, yeah. our, for our new console this reddit post goes on to say there are multiple different source uh leakers slash sources the alleged leak i mentioned is not from the factory uncle mentioned in the op it is however the latest round of switch successor rumors started the three leakers slash sources are 4chan pokemon leaker jeff grubb which i have a tweet from him he completely goes back on it and well he doesn't go back on it mm-hmm. he he invalidates this right uh and the factory uncle who has leaked previous edition special editions before from fami boards and this is a quote from fami boards so we're digging deep into this factory uncle and thread potentially leaking info of next gen switch factory development for over a year get mega bombed suddenly this is probably translated from chinese get mega bombed suddenly right now of all times with the phrase ninja being dropped in relation the last thing they mentioned was Nintendo completing all trial testing of the new parts and are just waiting to give the approval of mass production. 
And then this Reddit user goes on to say, I bolded the most relevant part of the speculation. This factory uncle has been allegedly leaking info from Nintendo's next console for over a year, but didn't get banned until this week after rumors started picking up Steam with the 4chan Pokemon leak and Jeff Grubb's comments. The speculation is that this banning adds legitimacy to the rumor about a next-gen Switch coming at the end of the year slash early next year with started which started with the 4chan Pokemon leak I originally mentioned. Uh, and then we said, do we know if it's much more powerful? And then someone said, much more powerful. The stolen NVIDIA documents mentioned a PS4 Pro level GPU. Okay. Uh, it's an Amper chip, so it will have dedicated tensor cores and DLSS ray tracing. I think I remember that. Mm-hmm. And we looked at it and it was like, this doesn't seem right. There was the NVIDIA leak. Yes. And uh, it seemed like they pitched a Nintendo DLSS and yes. stuff. And that's as, you know, it doesn't necessarily yeah, mean right, right. that that technology is going to make it into a new Switch. Uh, this may or may not be true, but I expect Nintendo to significantly underclock it. Yeah. That they, they I, I take issue with people thinking that this console is going to be, like, super powerful. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure it will be it will it will be pow- more powerful than the current Switch. That's a given. absolutely. I think we need to f- keep expectations in check. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be PS5 level. It might not even be PS4 Pro level. I think if anything, it will be maximum PS4 baseline original release PS4. I think somewhere around the Steam Deck. Yeah, which can do PS4. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 makes PS good enough. PS4. I don't even think it'll hit Steam Deck numbers. I think it'll right. just be somewhere between the Nintendo Switch now and, the Steam and Deck. somewhere close to the Steam Deck, yeah. but not really. Right. Uh, which is why I think it's ridiculous when people start throwing around 4K. Um, I before we get too far out of it, I want to read what Jeff Grubb had to say. Yes. Uh, he quote tweeted. Well, someone screenshot in my nintendo news jeff grubb has sparked a room uh, so now my nintendo news made an article about what jeff grubb said in i think a kind of funny podcast jeff grubb has sparked a number of con- conversations online regarding his latest talk about the successor to the nintendo switch family of systems speaking on kind of funny games daily to celebrate the nintendo switch's sixth anniversary that's what we should have done this week oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> everyone i do a video every year for the six that for the anniversary of the switch yeah this year completely forgot <laughs> just not gonna do I mean, it how anyway. many times can you celebrate after the last year i ran out of things to say yeah nothing yeah, has changed the switch is still a good system yeah maybe i'll do a youtube short uh to celebrate the nintendo switch's sixth anniversary he cryptically said that wh- whatever is next for nintendo may not be a slightly higher spec switch or indeed a nintendo switch 2 but something in between that allows them to carry over the users they have gained from the popular switch platform and then grub quote tweeted that and said this was just my opinion and speculation because someone asked me for that on a podcast please <laughs> You are allowed to post my Nintendo thoughts on forums and blogs as news, uh, but then you have to do that with all my other thoughts. And I've been looking at a lot of Rogue uh, Rouge the Bat in Sonic 06 lately, so really think about what you're agreeing to. <laughs> He's basically saying, like, dude, I would just spitball and leave me yeah. alone, which makes sense. Um, there's other... Things being thrown out there, like, uh, I don't know where this, uh, oh, there's, there's talk about Smash Brothers. Um, people are saying Smash Brothers is five years old now. Every, normally a Smash game comes out every six to seven years. They said the next one is just going to be Smash Ultimate Deluxe and it's going to have all the DLC. Yeah. Hungry Box tweeted, it'll be announced in 2025. This is just him spitballing, but it'll be announced in 2025. It won't be Smash 6. It'll be Ultimate Deluxe. It'll have a couple of new characters. It'll be $60. Uh, It'll be released on a Switch Pro like console in 4K. Yeah. And uh, I said it will not be 4K and it will be $70. Mm -hmm. But the rest sounds pretty legitimate. Right. The rest sounds like pretty, pretty safe bet. That there'll be a Smash Ultimate Deluxe sometime in like 2025. Yeah. And it'll be for a new console. I think at most 
if Nintendo makes a new console, you're getting 1440p max. Yeah. And that's it. I don't even think a dock will upscale. I hmm. I think they will do the same sort of dock, dummy dock situation where it'll just give more power to the console. Yeah. But there won't be any actual graphic chip in it. It'll just it'll just literally let the the device run at a higher capacity because it's plugged in right. to power. It'll literally right. just provide power. Yeah, I can see that. I can I mean I can also see them do like the barest minimum of upscaling to 4K. Mm-hmm. Like um like just some weird checkerboarding thing or like a cheap version of DLSS, but like not yeah. not a full like upscale, not yeah. a proper upscale 4K. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people keep throwing around DLSS yeah. for, for upscale. That's NVIDIA's technology to upscale. And they even have like a little, they could put a little chip in the device that is just for DLSS. Yeah. I don't think Nintendo would do that. Yeah. Also, I think that that makes a lot of sense for a, for a company to do, but I think that Nintendo doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> I also don't think it's that easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, people just, they're, they're just throwing around the terms because they, you know, it, that's what it is. Like DLSS. This happens helps. every time there's a yeah, new Nintendo DLSS console. helps upscale to 4K, but it's not that simple. There's yeah. a lot more that goes into it, and it could be really bad. Yeah. It could look bad. Like yeah. like it's not gonna be the perfect, pristine, uh, polished Nintendo technology. Yes. Like they want it to. Yes. Work exactly the same all of the time. So I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm sure this is the same way now, but um, when movie studios deliver. Uh, product to itunes itunes has a very strict quality control process that you have to go through and they will fail you for every little thing and the reason why their quality control is so strict is because if somebody picks up an ipad and the video quality doesn't look good on the ipad then they'll think the ipad is the problem not the movie right so they need to make sure that every single movie and tv show that is sent to itunes has this like industry leading top of the line quality control check that it has to pass right just so the ipads look good same thing over here if a game is going to come if a dlss chip or whatever the fuck it, it is that you know if it makes the switch look bad that's not good for nintendo yeah it also needs to be easy to develop for yes. and and dlss the idea around it is that it's the easiest because mm-hmm. you just put your game there at 1080p and then the DLSS will knock it up to fourteen forty. Well, I don't know about easy to develop because Nintendo like has shown in the past that like yes they do have consoles that are easy to develop for, but their stuff is still highly proprietary mm-hmm. uh, compared to like what Sony and Microsoft do. So they're still it's still fairly difficult to develop for Nintendo platforms. Yes, I think they've gotten a lot better. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, no, they get better every every console. I think this generation all of the consoles have become uh, the easiest to develop for that they've ever been. Yes. Yeah. This is the easiest Nintendo console to develop for. Mm-hmm. The Switch and the, I mean, the, the PS5 and the Series X, those are both like basically computers. Yeah. The Switch is basically an Android device. Yeah. Uh, the difficulty is that it's just so underpowered. If you want to port something to it, you're going to have issues. And DLSS is not going to help that. Right. It, 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 I just, I don't see... Nintendo Nintendo's not the company to just arbitrarily arbitrary is the wrong word. Nintendo's not the company to just shove a bunch of tech into something and then release yeah. it. You know, DLSS would make a lot of sense mm-hmm. for like a gaming tablet or something, which is the Switch essentially yeah. is. A nice beefy, you know, uh 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 GPU CPU hybrid chip yeah, yeah. would make a lot of sense. Uh the Razer uh Edge has a bunch of great technology in it. Nintendo's not going to do any of that shit. Mm-hmm. They're going to take a fucking cheapo uh, uh Google Pixel yeah. and they're going to go put this and put it in here and then yeah. put some control and, sign and, and we're good. Make, make it run Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, and then we got and we got it. And we got it. Yeah. That's that's they're going to take technology that's like 2 years old and they're going to shove it into a device with awesome controllers. Yeah. And then they're going to sell it for $400. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're going to buy it and yeah. then you're going to like it. And Mario's going to be on it. And it's going to be good. Um. Anyway, somebody in the chat said uh, Doc will have upscaling. No, the Doc's not going to provide anything. Somebody say, also said, will the Doc 
could the doc help frame rate? Uh, again, that's if they put like you know special chips in it yeah. to help speed things and up. And it's technically possible. Yeah. But I don't think Nintendo will do that. I think that it will help the frame rate in that the console will be plugged into power and it can use more power. You don't have to worry about the battery draining. Right. So technically it could help with frame rate. There's this weird shit going on with the Steam Deck where people are running Steam Deck games at 40 frames per second. Okay. And that's like the golden like area, yeah. they, they, they say. I think that, um, I mean, Nintendo has an issue getting at 1080p right now. Yeah. So this next gen console, I think at most 1440, but even that games are going to be 30 frames a second. Like yeah. games still aren't going to be running that great. Even, even at that, that's what I, that's a guess. That's me guessing. As far as the leaks, it just sounds like we're getting the console later this year, but yeah. this looks like plans, not nothing set in stone, especially if we're involving Pokemon as yeah. part of the, the yeah, I feel like if Nintendo is going to do anything, like, if there's any going to be any marquee game for the next Switch, it's going to be, like, a Mario or a Zelda. I mean, probably not Zelda, because that's coming out on regular Switch. Mm-hmm. So it'll probably be whatever the next Mario game is. Oh, also, um, somewhere in this, they said that it would be, like, a just a graphical improvement, like a, like a more powerful Switch, maybe mm-hmm. not a complete Switch 2. Um, that doesn't seem right. I do think that whatever their next console is will have a pretty substantial backwards compatibility. And that's evident evidenced by that freaking they had like a like a trade like an insider or like report like years ago mm-hmm. where they said they're working on having an, a unified account system that yes. will make it so that whatever the next system is will will hopefully yeah. uh have the same games on. although i did see i mean i didn't watch this video but modern vintage gamer had something about like how backwards compatibility on the next switch might be a problem yeah i want to hear what he has to say about that because, because i think that's crazy from the summary i read it's because the switch is running using a tegra chip right and if the next console doesn't have a processor that's compatible with what the tegra does then that could lead to problems yeah, because and then otherwise the next switch would have to use software emulation to emulate a, a regular switch. Now he's a developer, yeah, so he knows what he's talking about. Yes, but I thought the Tegra chip was a pretty universal Android chip. So if this is Android well, it's, architecture, it's what's the arm. problem? It's it's an ARM based uh-huh. chip, but I don't know if if like another ARM based chip, like a Qualcomm chip or a Snapdragon chip. If that's going to be, you know, if that's going to cause problems like porting things over from a Tegra chip. You know, normally I would say I don't see why not. But I have dabbled with with emulating Switch on Android Mm -hmm. and it does run pretty wonky. But I mean, any sort of emulation, especially when you're in current generation, is Mm going to be wonky. Right. So that makes a little bit of sense. Yeah. Um. I this is what I wanted to point out, and this was actually in response to uh, uh, Modern Vintage Gamers uh, uh, video. This is OJ uh, posted uh, this picture, which uh, is in this was in like a document that that they yeah. had internally like a few years ago. Um, future outlook: You have 2004 to 2006 integrated hardware, software, Nintendo DS, and Wii. Then you have nintendo switch and like nintendo switch and 20xx next gaming system (laughs) is all under a nintendo account right so it looks like they're trying to unify it from from nintendo switch on that's what that seems like and i don't i I mean i mean that would make the most sense but as we've seen nintendo not doesn't really do things that make sense (laughs) (laughs) yes I think that uh, there shouldn't be a problem with most games. I, th- I think yeah. that there should be concern over stuff like Breath of the Wild and like yeah. Mario Odyssey. The games like that, though, are so big, Nintendo might just patch them out for the new consoles. Yeah. But games like fucking Shovel Knight, I don't want to buy that a sixth time, yeah. you know? 
I have it on my on on my Switch. Yeah. It doesn't take any power to run, so just put that on the next console. Even if it's emulated, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be a problem. It should run perfectly fine. Yeah. There's not many games that I would even want to carry over to the next console that are going to be too powerful to run on different architecture. Right. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it wasn't what Grub said, literally just this image. All that that tweet was said was, we're going to keep our accounts. I don't... Is that is that what he said? This is what... I mean, this is the only thing that will bring I, Nintendo in the 21st yeah. fucking century. <laughs> They've been, everybody else has let you download games across yeah. platforms, uh, except Nintendo. So. Uh, Modern Vintage Game, we're talking about how each Switch game has its own graphics driver stack. Versus other systems that do it at a system level, every game would need to be recompiled with drivers for the next GPU. This is from Jesticle. That sounds incredibly complicated. Yes. <laughs> it's similar to like N64 emulation. Like every game uses the N64 architecture differently. That's why you can't make one N64 emulator that, you know, encompasses all of it. When you uh, emulate Wii U and Switch, mm-hmm. uh, when you emulate a game like Breath of the Wild, it has to compile all of the shaders. I'm still not even 100% sure what a shader is. <laughs> it's like a piece of graphics. Yeah. That's what a, that's what the definition was I when I looked it up. I just assume it's like shadows. That's what I thought. But no, I think it's literally like a, pe- a graphical piece. Yeah. Like a, like a, a, a side of a polygon or right. some shit. Um, it has to compile all of them and it saves them in like a in like a in like an archive basically. Right. Uh, and you have to do that for every, every time you load the game it has to yeah. pull from those shaders. So uh that's something that doesn't fucking happen in any other type of emulation that yeah. I've ever experienced. So it is pretty complex, but uh those are games like Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Games like again fucking Shovel Knight. I'm not compiling any shaders. Yeah. That game doesn't need to it doesn't have a GPU stack. Uh Dramax says a shader is a program that runs on the GPU instead of on the CPU to do some extra effects to the geometry and textures. Is a program? Yes. Shaders are mul- mini programs that help calculate colors and lights when shading objects and textures in 3D space. Okay, so that's Oh, we got a lot thing. of game developers in the show. So that's the thing. That's yeah. the thing that uh that they got to compile is that thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See, we're learning here. You get more performance from accessing silicon directly. Got it. Well, I think that the next switch is going to run on some sort of Android architecture. Yeah. So I don't think it's going to be that dissimilar from what they have already. I don't think there's this much to worry about. Yes. Especially if they want to keep things unified. And also, it's possible we might it might be more difficult to do something like Breath of the Wild or 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 uh, uh Mario Odyssey. But they'll fucking they'll figure it out. Yeah. Just give me my shovel knight. Yeah. So I don't have to purchase it a fifth time. Anyway, uh, Lord M- Mugen says rumored to be a Tegra T239 for the next console. Okay. So another Tegra. So then what are we worried about? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's enough of our uh, Switch 2 music. Yes. I mean, we'll probably have more throughout the year. The Switch is old at this yes. point. And then uh, we'll probably have the same takes the, the, over and over The problem over is like it's obvious people are hungry for a, ne- a next gen switch of some kind. Yeah. So people are just going to start making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> That's we should make a rumor. We should every week. We should have a new switch. rumor. Oh, just a ridiculous one. Yeah. We'll just start the show with a yeah. new ridiculous switch. Yes. Rumor. Uh, let's do a special thank you to T bird for the five months. Thank you. Thanks man. Uh, this exact discussion is going to repeat itself until Nintendo's official announcement, whether this that's this year or five years from now. Yeah. True. Yeah. But, I mean, we can still come up with our own conspiracy theories. True. Yeah. Even after the official announcement, we can be like, well, 
you know, the reason why they canceled a third joystick on there is because of the or the initial leaks. Yeah, that's going to happen. When we're wrong, we'll make an excuse for why we're wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on to Final Fantasy 16 producer Yoshida sparks debate over use of the term JRPG. Now, I originally read... Somebody told me about this in Twitch chat mm -hmm. on Sunday. And then the article I pulled up was a Kotaku article that infuriated me. <laughs> so we have Eurogamer here. Yes. Go, go, uh, go uh, Final Fantasy 16 producer uh, Nako, uh, Naoki Yoshida criticized the term JRPG, sparking debate amongst players online. In an interview with Skilla following previews of the game, Yoshida was asked about how JRPGs have advanced in comparison to action games. According to the interviewer, Yoshida was visibly uncomfortable with the phrase. One thing Yoshida wants to get across is that when he, we create games, we don't go into them thinking we're creating JRPGs, we're just creating RPGs. The term JRPG is used by Western media rather than users and media in Japan, said the localization director Koji Fox. Yoshida went on to explain that many Japanese developers... For many Japanese developers, the term was considered uh, discriminatory when it first appeared 15 years ago. He said, as translated by Fox, this is going to depend on who you ask, but there was a time when this term first appeared 15 years ago, and for us as developers, the first time we heard it, it was like a discriminatory term, as though we were being made fun of for creating these games, and so for some developers, the term JRPG can be something that we will... That uh, maybe trigger that may trigger bad feelings because of what it was in the past. It wasn't a compliment to a lot of developers in Japan. We understand that recently JRPG has better connotations and it's being used as a positive, but we still remember the time when it was used as a negative. He continued, I remember seeing something 15 years ago, which was basically a definition of what a JRPG was versus a Western RPG, and it's kind of like Final Fantasy VII, and it's and it has this type of graphics, this length of story, a compart uh, compartmentalizing of what we were creating in a JRPG box, and taking offense to that because that's not how we were. Uh, that's not how we're going into creating. We were going into creating an RPG, but to be car car compartmentalized. Like I know that word, but like seeing it spelled <laughs> out like is really intimidating. Yes, it's to a be, big, it's big, it's long. a surprisingly big word. To be car uh, compartmentalized. Uh, they felt was discriminatory. Yoshida's response also adds context to the decision to choose real-time combat instead of turn-based as he discussed the perception of JRPG combat. Traveling around the world, speaking with fans and media about their image of the franchise, they would always give me the same answer. It, that it's turn-based, that it's like an anime, these teenagers saving the world, very JRPG, said Yoshida. This was the image for all of Final Fantasy. This was turning off some players because they thought it could only be that, and that was a reason not to get into it. Yoshida's comments have sparked debate amongst players online as to the use of the term JRPG. Video game critic Alex Dolenson said JRPG can be considered a subset of design and stylistic hallmarks that were bred in Japan in the 80s and 90s, but agrees that the term has been used uh, pejoratively. Maybe we need a better word, he said, adding it's probably not entirely fit for the purpose, especially if it causes this sort of reaction in Japan. Video Gomez says, don't care. Still a game by Square Enix. Fuck Square Enix. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good take. Yes. Um, Final Fantasy player and streamer Dreamborn appreciates your sheet of shedding light on the term JRPG. I think a lot of people who were... Uh, I think a lot of people who were there recognizes how JRPG has a shorthand for anime trash. Um, it is absolutely natural that they don't want to be stuck uh, in an, impo an imposed genre. They want to compete against God of War, Horizon, and other massive IPs. I totally understand them that the term JRPG prevents them from being part of this conversation. It undermines them. Yes. Yes. Uh, somebody in the chat asks, K King Wizard says, isn't Elden Ring a JRPG? And I think Lord Mugen says no. It is. It is. I was actually watching a Jim Quisition video about this very topic before, okay. and uh, they bring that up. You know, games like Elden Ring and Demon Souls and Dark Souls are technically JRPGs because yeah. they are RPGs made in Japan. Yeah, but they don't exhibit 
you know, they're action oriented instead of turn based oriented. Right. They don't have, you know, cute anime boys, you know, doing weird, cute anime boy yeah, things. Yeah. You know, it's it's a little bit more mature, I guess you could say, than like your Final Fantasies or your Chrono Triggers or your Dragon's Quests and the like. Yeah, there's uh the 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 term RPG even is yeah. really uh broad and there's a lot of things that fall under the rpg definition but we tend to use it more for like turn-based combat stuff yes um yeah i i think that so so it it seems like so this this whole conversation also sparked people going back and pulling old uh 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 g4 tv uh, reviews yeah specifically x play reviews yeah specifically of uh bat and kaitos the gamecube yeah. game there was a, there was more than just that that was yeah, the first that, one that was the one that got the most traction yeah. yeah because they were really uh shitting on jrpgs they were like yeah. oh it's another shitty jrpg yeah. and i mean like to be fair i mean it, it was that like you know now kind of cringy early 2000s racist humor for lack of a better word well yeah the, the, they after that they dug up a a lot of x play getting really weirdly racist against japanese people yeah uh and it was very bizarre and weird yeah Uh, and then adam sessler doubled down and was like all gamers are cringe fuck you guys i did nothing wrong but really he was was like like, man just say it was old and you were younger and say you're sorry (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's okay to make mistakes Yeah. yeah but whatever um i do remember that time when yes when a game would come out, we'd go, oh, it's a JRPG. Somebody in the chat said, you mean weeb shit? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is a thing we do here. We do call things weeb shit. Yes. And there is, like, there is, there's a stigma, there was a stigma around JRPGs that yeah. I don't think is as bad now. No. But not. there is a certain type of Japanese RPG yeah. that I'm not a fan of. Yeah. I mean, the, the term, there's nothing offensive about the term jrpg like it's an rpg from japan yeah. which is inherently going to be different from an rpg made in europe or in america yeah. just because you know every culture has different ideals different sensibilities you know it's the same thing like a japanese <coughs> film is different from an american film it just is yeah i think the prop- like a spaghetti western exactly yeah. is a western made in italy which is probably a fucked up way yeah. of call it, but you know it's, it's fine That's it's, what, it's, yeah. they are a specific type of film yes. you know um i think where you run into the problem is when you get people who react to jrpgs the way those old x-play clips did yeah. where like they immediately just shut down and just like don't accept it because it's you're othering them yes is the what i'm trying to go for you're not looking at you know japan is like a, a unique culture of people you're looking at them like you know aliens like monsters well that's almost. what that's exactly what yoshida was getting at yes and to me it doesn't seem like he's offended i mean he's not offended that the term exists he's offended at, at how people use it and uh i i saw an article i can't find it now the kotaku article that i originally read yeah but it infuriated me because it said we don't it says we call them jrpgs they don't call them western rpgs but they do though yeah they call bethesda games western rpgs it's kotaku or no japanese people right call them western made games right which is not a problem yeah it, the problem is we had a stigma against jrpgs at the time exactly also the problem yoshida is specifically talking about is it's like going up to a guy who makes anime mm-hmm. and being like, hey, do you consider, is Castlevania, Castlevania is, the new Castlevania was made by a, is made outside of Japan, wasn't it? Which one? What's an anime that looks like an anime, but isn't made in Japan? Oh, uh, the the Castlevania anime. Yes. Or um, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Avatar. Is Avatar anime? Yeah. A Japanese person would go, yeah, because anime is just animation. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you're in Japan asking a guy about a JRPG. He's going to be like, just call it RPG. You're yeah. in Japan. Yeah. You know, that's why he's offended. Yeah. Like, just call it an RPG. You're here. Right. You're in my world where it's just an RPG. Yeah. You know, so. that's what he's offended about. Yeah. I don't think he's necessarily upset that we are calling it a Japanese RPG. Well, I think he's upset because of the the stigma that we kind of, we meaning collectively, like Western audiences put on RPGs yeah. in the early 
Japanese RPGs in the early yeah. 2000s. And that was a time like when the Japanese gaming industry was kind of at like a turning point because you had a lot of people saying like, oh, the Japanese aren't making good games anymore. You had people like, um, what's his name? The the Mighty Number no. 9 creator who was saying like- Inafune. Inafune. He was saying like the Japanese gaming industry is done unless they start adapting Western yeah. sensibilities. You know, and like I think a lot of Japanese companies took that to heart and like tried to do a lot of things that didn't pan out. Yeah. And then, you know, eventually it circled back around and now, you know, Resident Resident Evil like got back on track after trying to be Call of Duty and Gears of War for years. Uh people like Final Fantasy games again. Yeah. You know, the depends on the up and up again. Exactly. Sonic is good again. <laughs> um <laughs> So, not, but not, not because of Japan. <laughs> Sonic's good again because they hired a bunch of fans. True. <laughs> not because of Sega. But yeah, I, I, the another one of my issues with this is that Final Fantasy 16 is all of the things I hate about JRPGs. <laughs> well, they got the it, the article says, what is it? Uh, we'll feature real-time action combat from Devil May Cry's Ryota Suzuki. Oh, okay, that's so cool. So there you go. So there you go. It's a Devil May Cry. It's just All a. Right. It's a very long Devil May Cry. It's game. a different JRPG's <laughs> combat, <laughs> but I like Devil May Cry. Yes. So I like Devil May Cry. Yeah, so also, still not gonna play this game. <laughs> I will watch some videos and see how I feel about it. Yes, I did play a little bit of Final Fantasy 15, and that wasn't bad. Okay. It, you know, honestly, it looked pretty good. Yeah. It like, looked like I could play that. I think now, like, we're all older. Society has moved on, and we can accept and appreciate, like, different kinds of games. I was playing a fucking tabletop Dungeons & Dragons game. Exactly. And I was liking it. Yeah. So, who knows yeah. what, I, what I'm So, like. I, I tell people that, like, hey, you ever play this game, Florence? It's about a girl going through a breakup. Yeah. It's awesome. It's two hours. It's awesome. Yeah. Playing on your phone. <laughs> but i mean i don't really usually like turn-based stuff yeah i like pokemon sometimes yeah i like freaking dungeons and dragons stupid game yeah like i, I i'm cool with it in s some aspects yeah. so i'm i'm not here to discredit jrpgs yeah it's just normally i could look at it and be like i'm not gonna be interested in right that. but a game like persona 5 i want to try that yeah and that's, and that's the most jrpg yeah. that you can get would you consider Pokemon a JRPG? Absolutely, one thousand. Because a lot of people that don't. That's insane. Yeah, it's they're not. If you don't consider Pokemon a JRPG, you're just saying that you don't like JRPGs and you're uncomfortable with yeah. liking a JRPG, and you're also saying it's too mainstream to be a JRPG. Exactly, which yeah. is ridiculous. You're the fucking problem if, yeah. that, if that's the case. Considering how the number one movie in America right now is Creed three. And its director, Michael B. Jordan, has gone out of his way to say, like, oh, yeah, I ripped off all the animes I liked as a kid to make this movie. <coughs> I like, saw the comparisons between uh, Dragon Ball Z and the fights in Creed. Yeah. Have you seen the... Um, <coughs> I'm joking. Here. Have you seen the meme going around of uh, Jonathan Majors, the, the antagonist from Creed 3, talking about Michael B. Jordan, like, telling him all the anime influences? No. It's hysterical. Because it's so obvious Jonathan Majors has never watched anime. <laughs> And he's trying to, like, be nice about Michael B. Jordan being a complete weeb. It's like, yeah, he told me, he showed me all these animes, and it's about uh, friends who were friends and not friends anymore. And he's just describing... Oh, I saw that, and all the comments were like, that's either Naruto versus whatever the fuck. Baruto. Or, or uh, some Dragon Ball fight. Yeah, he's, it's like he's basically describing every shonen anime. Yeah. No, that makes... Yeah, it's it's, just, it's, just <laughs> I mean, it's only up. a matter of time before... Yeah, our generation grows up. That's the thing. Like Michael B. Jordan is my age, shit. so like, yeah, in, like we grew up watching that stuff. So he gets it and understands. Of course, it. you're gonna take influence yeah. from that stuff. Got him. Choke it over here. <laughs> um, so that's it. I don't think we're canceling the term JRPG. No, I think that. Uh, I don't know. I don't think we're canceling it, but I think now we're more aware of it, of like what Japan. We we need to accept that ten years ago we had some weird stigmas against yes. JRPGs yes. and we did here by calling things weeb shit. Yes. But I feel like I have a pass <laughs> calling things weeb shit. I, I feel like we, like we've always, like when we say weeb shit, like at that, least that, I, it's maybe, one of those things that's so ridiculous because I'm a fucking weeb. Yeah. That's why I'm allowed to say like, it. 
I mean, maybe we shouldn't assume this, but like I've always assumed we said we were saying that with like an obvious wink and a nod. Yes, it, it's it's like saying nerd shit. Like, yes, exactly. Like like when Dad's talking about football, we're like, that's the nerdiest nerd shit, shit I've ever yeah. heard because we have a fucking podcast. We talk about yeah. video games, so like obviously we're we're in there when we call something weeb shit or nerd shit, we're in the trenches with you. Yeah. I don't think you can call yourself a weeb unless you own a Saturn, like a Sega Saturn. Yeah, so uh, I've been trying to get through Burning Rangers <laughs> on a Sega Saturn emulator. Sega Saturn emulation sucks. It does. It is very. I was playing it difficult. at three frames a second. And it was a very good game. Still. Yeah. Maybe we should just get a Sega Saturn. There's just no games. This is not worth it because there's no fucking games. It's not true. There's Panzer Dragoon. There's Virtual Fighter Two. Mm -hmm. There's Dynamite Decca. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Dynamite Decca is on Saturn. <coughs> Every time I buy a Final Fantasy game, I hate myself for giving Square Enix money, but my childhood won't let me stop. Well, I, I mean, people like them. I don't yeah. think any... I can't think of a time when somebody has... I mean, when, when you get a Final Fantasy game, you're a Final Fantasy fan. Yeah. There's nobody who's like, let me see what this Final Fantasy <laughs> business is all about. Usually... Uh, the people who buy the games like the games. Yeah, I've never seen anybody like be like, I got it, and I didn't like it. I I feel like I I know like just from like being an observer of culture that like Final Fantasy thirteen people genuinely don't like because it was very linear. Like you, mm -hmm. the joke was like you just walk down corridors for twenty hours. Right. So like that one I know like people didn't like, but then like everyone seemed to enjoy fifteen. People are excited for 16. 14 had a reinvention that everyone seems to enjoy. Okay. Um, Dynamite Decca, uh, also known as Dynamite Cop, uh, was on the Dreamcast. Oh, you dummy. Yeah. You idiot. Uh, do you know what that game was known as outside of Japan, though? Dynamite Decca? Yeah. It's not Outriders, is it? No. What is it? Die Hard Arcade. Oh, fuck. <laughs> It was a diehard video game. I looked up Outriders because I was like, we had that game and it was kind of like Winback. Was it like a sequel to Winback? And then I looked at the gameplay and I was like, oh, this looks like shit. Oh, on Dreamcast? Yeah. No, that was like a... It was online, like an arcade thing. It was like, yeah, it was like, an, uh, like a Quake 3 Arena type game. Yeah. It was supposed to be played online. Mm -hmm. Why do we have it? I don't know. <laughs> I, think the, uh, I think when Tim gave us his Dreamcast, that was one of the games he gave it. Mm, came okay. with it. We gotta ask Tim why he why he had, had Outriders. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So that's that's our take on JRPGs from two white guys who have no business talking about yep. uh, these issues. <laughs> uh. Anyway, Sony may be forced to reveal what it pays for exclusives. <gasps> yes. Thank God that would be cool. Uh. Sony might be forced to detail its PlayStation exclusivity deals. And how much it pays for blocking rights to keep games off rival Shit. services like Xbox Game Pass. That means that Microsoft might have to also disclose yes. what it does for Game Pass. The FTC has sued to try and block Microsoft's Activision Blizzard acquisition and kicked off a legal discovery process with Microsoft sending subpoenas to Sony to force it to reveal records, internal documents, and emails from the company's PlayStation unit. Kotaku spotted that the FTC chief administrative judge, D. Michael Chappell, has now sided with Microsoft's request for details of Sony's PlayStation exclusivity deals. The request covers deals made after January 1st, 2019, including fees or agreements that prevented publishers from placing games on Xbox Game Pass. The judge's decision comes after Microsoft previously accused Sony of paying for blocking rights to stop developers from adding their content to Game Pass. Here is the latest, uh, here's Microsoft's latest claim summarized Summarized in the words of Judge Chapel, Microsoft argues that the complaint, uh, the complaint in the case makes a number of allegations uh, regarding high-performance video game console developers' exclusivity arrangements with video game publishers. Microsoft states that it is aware that Sony, Entertain Sony Interactive Entertainment requires many third-party publishers to agree to exclusivity provisions, including preventing the publishers from putting their games on Xbox's multi-game subscription service and that understanding the full extent of SIE's exclusivity arrangements and their effective in, and their effect on industry competitiveness will assist in its defense. The nature and extent of SIE's content licensing agreements are relevant to the compl uh, complaints or to the complaints allegations of exclusivity 
arrangements between video game console developers and video game developers and publishers, said Judge Chapel. Somebody, uh, Video Gomez in the chat says, what kind of word is subpoenas? <laughs> it's a legal one. I thought he said soup penis. Mm. I can go for soup now. But not that kind. <laughs> uh, Microsoft has also been trying to get details on Sony's deals dating back to 2012, but Judge Chapel labeled this excessive and granted Sony's request to limit the application time for documentary requests to 2019 instead. It's incredibly rare for details on such exclusivity deals to be made public, but the FTC case could open up some of the secrecy of the games industry in court hearings. The last time we saw similar details revealed in court uh, was between was in the case Epic Games versus Apple in 2021. That case showed how Microsoft had explored reducing its Xbox store cut to shake up console gaming and how Sony had implemented cross-play platform fees and that Fortnite was a PS4 cash flow. The FTC case is still at the document discovery stage with an evidentiary hearing scheduled for August 2nd, so we're months away from seeing any potential new deals. Uh, elsewhere, Microsoft's deal is likely to be approved by EU regulators, the combination of a binding 10-year agreement with Nintendo to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo platforms and a similar deal with NVIDIA has reportedly convinced the European Commission to approve the acquisition. Microsoft still faces scrutiny from UK and US regulators, though, with Britain's Competition and Markets Authority, CMA, um, offering possible remedies last month and, uh, that include forcing Microsoft to solve Activision Blizzard's business associated with Call of Duty. It's a lot. But the main takeaway is that uh, we might now know just how much money Sony is giving to publishers and developers to not put their games on Game Pass or Xbox at all. I think that's the most egregious thing that Sony has been doing is that they're... But here, the thing is, like, when you when games become exclusive, there's obviously money being yeah. handed back and yeah. forth. Like, Microsoft does it too, to make games exclusive to Xbox. I know, but for some reason specifically pointing out one platform and saying you could do whatever you want just don't go to him yeah that seems dirtier than just straight up exclusivity to me i don't know why but it does <laughs> it, it's because they're pointing out and they're saying that guy fuck that guy mm -hmm. you can't go to that guy right. you can go to anybody else but that guy no got it that seems weird it seems weird yeah to me. i mean there's definitely um I mean, there's definitely been, like, aggressiveness from Sony's part and like, trying to, you know, keep Xbox in last place, yeah. I guess, as it were. Um, and Xbox, you know, really trying to make themselves look like the underdog in this situation. Yeah. Um, but that that's, I'm assuming that Sony's going to come back and say, how much do you pay for Game Pass exclusivity? Right. Because I mean, that's the next logical I'm, surp I'm surprised that ha that wasn't brought up as a terms of agreement. Like, yeah. The judge will say, yes, Sony has to do that, but Microsoft also has to do that. Yeah. Uh, we know a little bit about Microsoft's uh, Game Pass deals. Yeah. Because some, some developers have come forward, but we don't know the nitty gritty. And I think that this is the only way we'll ever find that out yeah. is, is a court deal like, like this. But it's also possible that Sony has to give up their payment and uh, Xbox doesn't because... Yeah. Uh, it seems like the people who are facilitating this deal have no idea what's going on. <laughs> they don't know anything about the games yeah. industry. So, uh, perhaps Microsoft could be better about enticing third parties to develop for their platform instead of complaining that they don't <laughs> have games. It's true. They got. They should have plenty of games. They should. They should have plenty. They of games. don't. But yeah. they should. That's their own fault. Yeah. They're only complaining because they have to look like the little guy in this freaking court yeah. document. And, and and Sony is complaining that they're the little guy when they're not. Yeah. So both of them are doing stupid big time corporate bullshit. They're going at they're going above and beyond to make sure yeah. Call of Duty <laughs> stays independent. Yeah. Or yeah. not independent in Microsoft's case. Uh, we got Skyru with the 10 months. If I didn't say that already, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And Bushin Ryu Cat with 510 bits. Uh, Wolf, I'll take a chance. Uh, Steam Deck owner here. I want to improve the graphical details of games. Uh, a human face has no nose sticking out. Looks like a bobblehead. <laughs> 
what graphics settings give me all the details that sounds game specific yeah because every game is going to have different settings uh go to the proton da- database website uh and look up the specific game that you want to mess with and you will find other users who tweak the settings to work correctly mm-hmm. that's the best bet that you're going to get otherwise i don't mess with anything on the steam deck when i play a game when i load up a game i leave it pretty much as is, and yeah. however it runs is how it runs but i don't i haven't really been messing around with too much like uh unsupported games everything i've run has pretty much worked out of the box it either works or it doesn't for me yeah um the only thing i really mess with is controls because controls can be yeah just, that can be just yeah messed up but it's easy on the steam deck riser 64 thanks for the 18 months uh okay moving on here all right what else do we have to talk about today okay probably oh. the most important thing. this is important yes. i hope that this happens yes and, fi- uh, and i won't miss this one yeah yeah I, i'm kicking myself uh well r- the horror classic resident evil 4 is getting a big makeover this month don't expect the same treatment for the game's iconic chainsaw controller the resident evil 4 chainsaw controller came at a time Whoa. when the uh, many game companies were experimenting with different types of weird controllers and peripherals the product a product of the early 2000s the gore covered gamepad was designed for 2005's original resident evil 4 on the gamecube the design is unforgettable uh, uh, from the moment you lay eyes on it the bright yellow bloodstained base uh, is fitted with all the buttons you'd expect from a gamecube controller and it's connected to a, the chainsaw's giant bloody per, uh, purely cosmetic base uh with the resident Evil 4 remake set to come out this month we naturally uh, thought it would be fitting to ask capcom about a return of the classic chainsaw controller first of all thank you for remembering the controller capcom producer yoshiaki harabayashi told ign uh we mean i mean it was a great controller back in the day but unfortunately we are not able to recreate the chainsaw controller now one of the things that's stopping us is that we're releasing the game on so many platforms right now so that's a hurdle for us, and of course, the team focused on uh, a team focused on the team focused a lot on the actual development of the game. So that took a lot of time. So unfortunately, no chainsaw controllers as of now. Oh, Resident Evil Four launched as a console exclusive on the GameCube, meaning the chainsaw controller only had to come out in one version to match the console's button layout. Uh, we love this design and packaging back in the day, and its clunky control configuration, off balance analog stick made it less than ideal for actual play. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is coming out for PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC on March 23rd. Uh, it also there was also a PlayStation 2 version of the controller um, when that when it came out on PS2. It was orange, and the pull cord of the chainsaw actually worked. Like it was pause. <laughs> <laughs> Come to dinner on. Right. Ring. Ring. <laughs> uh, it makes sense that they would make a controller because it was exclusive to GameCube yeah. at the time uh so they're saying they're not making a controller correct that which, sucks which is the biggest disappointment of this whole remake thing if you ask me you're not yeah. gonna go all out that sucks i mean i would have definitely gotten one this time because so, because i'm pissed i didn't get one yeah last time. like i wish i would have gotten it because like nobody got it back then and like i was a poor high school teenager who was dating a girl who hated video games so there's no way in hell i would have been able to buy one of these um and then you know, now it's like several hundred dollars on eBay, right? Well, you can get the PlayStation version okay. for two hundred. Oh, that's not pretty, that's pretty not good. Terrible, yeah. It looks significantly worse. <laughs> um, you can get it in the box, like like not the not sealed in box, but the the box that it, apparently it comes in like a like a cool like yeah, box. it comes in like a nice yeah seven hundred dollars. Yeah, there you go, or five hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, I don't see the GameCube. Oh, there it is. Seven hundred dollars for the GameCube. Oh, that's in complete inbox. Complete inbox. Complete inbox. It's a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money for twenty-year-old systems. <laughs> Not a lot of GameCube uh, versions. A lot of PlayStation. I'm surprised that there's more PlayStation. Yeah, versions I mean, available. either people they didn't make a lot of GameCube versions, or uh, nobody wants to give away the, their GameCube version. True. And now I'm seeing it. Uh, seven hundred, five hundred, three hundred sixty. Yeah. What's this $1,800? Resident Evil 4 GameCube lot 
RE4 lot, GameCube. Oh, if it's a lot, that means they're selling multiples. Yeah, I'm trying to see. Yeah. It's the chainsaw and chainsaw and what else? Uh, Does it come with the game? Player's oh, Guide. Player's Guide. <laughs> uh, preview disc. Oh, I have. That's special, the version I have. Special edition. Game, the GameStop special edition. That's the one I have. That one. Yeah. But is there? There's a game in there though. Yeah. Oh, so it's a. So it's. So it's player's guide, preview disc, mm-hmm. uh, Resident Evil Four Special Edition, uh, and the chainsaw. Yes, eighteen hundred dollars. That is not eighteen hundred dollars worth of material no. right there. But the chainsaw is in the uh, display case box. Though. Yes. So that might that's the bulk of it right there. Yeah. That's sad. That's it. We will never. We will never. Yeah. Get the chainsaw in our it's lifetime. A big disappointment. Uh okay. What else do we have here? We got Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenchi Four announced. Tenkaichi. Budokai Tenkaichi. What did I say? Did I say it backwards? You said Tenchi. Or sure. <laughs> A new dra- uh the Dragon Ball Fighter Z World Tour 2022-2023 finals are currently underway, and kind of out of nowhere, Bandai. Namco and Toei and Animation announced a new Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi game. The game doesn't seem to have a final title yet, but if it were to continue the standard numbering, it would be Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 4. Bandai Namco is likely to provide more official details, such as available platforms soon, um, but right now there is an announcement teaser trailer pulled directly from the stream. The new Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi trailer uh, begins with a CRT TV playing footage from the original series before transitioning to a brand new graphics and Goku turning Super Saiyan Blue. The text get ready for battle and then uh, a new Budokai Tenkaichi begins, appears on screen, and that's it. That's all we have to go off of for uh, for the moment. They do a really good job of recreating the anime style these yeah. days. Uh, whether or not you call this uh, Budokai Tenkaichi 4 or not, it's more than it's been more than a decade since the franchise was active. The original three games released between 2005 and 2007, and there was a PSP tag uh, tag team game in 2010. What makes this game announcement more surprising is that Arc System Works has already been killing it for the past few years with a high quality fighting game, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, one that would have thought this would be the fighting game that would get a sequel. Perhaps both will happen in time. In the meantime. Um, this writer will just keep playing Dragon Ball The Breakers. I don't know what that is. So what the hell is the difference between Tenkaichi and Dragon Ball Fighters? So I know this is my limited knowledge of Dragon Ball Z fighting games. I know Dragon Ball Fighter Z is a 2D uh an- like cell drawn animated style fast paced fighting game. Mm-hmm. I know I don't know much about Budokai Tenkaichi, but I remember just regular vanilla Dragon Ball Z Budokai. And those were 3D fighters. Yeah, the chat's saying it's an arena fighter. It's, okay. Yeah, because Budokai was, you know, s- similar Street Fighter style one-on-one fighting game, but it was um, it was 3D. Okay. That, I'm, that's what I'm looking regular up, Budokai I'm looking was. up gameplay right now. And I remember when Budokai Tenkaichi came out, I asked my weeb friends, who I say with love, uh, what's the difference between them? It's like, oh no, it's completely different. I'm like, okay, yeah, uh, you, you play the cameras behind the characters now instead of side view. So, how do you do multiplayer? Split screen. Oh god, that sucks. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds like awful. Um, okay. So yeah, okay, that makes sense why there's different uh, uh franchises then. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat said it's like virtual on, virtual on. I've heard of virtual on. I don't think I've ever actually. Yeah, seen I don't think virtual I've seen it either. On. Um, but like to your point, I, it, and to this article's point, it is interesting because like Dragon Ball Fighter Z is like a legitimately great game. Like people love that game. It's very popular. Oh, it's I think I have this on my arcade cabinet. Oh, there you go. Um, so like, it's surprising that like, they're not doing Fighter Z too. They're just, they're going back to Tenkaichi. Yeah. That's very strange. There has to be, like, Fighter a... Z did really good. Yeah. People went fucking nuts when they dropped this. Trailer. I know. That's why and it was a really cool trailer. That's why I put it in the in the keep because I feel like this has to be talked about. People are losing their goddamn minds over the it. The way they revealed it was cool with the yeah. old school uh flat panel four by yeah. three uh TV, and then the, it transitioned into the new graphics. That was mm-hmm. cool, but no gameplay though. So that's a little no. Sad. So still early on that, but yeah. I mean, I guess this means we'll have, now have two. 
Dragon Ball game side by side, Tenkaichi and Fighter Z. Is there a Dragon Ball game at Evo? Yeah, I think Fighter Z is going to be at Evo. It's been there. It's been at Evo a couple of years. Yeah, I know it's been there before. Yeah, I think it's uh, going to be there again this year. I don't see it on the list. Uh, Evo twenty twenty three. Virtua Fighter Five Showdown will be. Yeah, Dragon Ball. Fighter oh, I'm Z. looking at. I'm looking at Japan. I'm looking at Japan in, in January. That happened already. Street Fighter Six, Guilty Gear, Mortal Kombat Eleven, Tekken Seven, King of Fighters Fifteen, Melty Blood, which we now know is very popular. Uh, <laughs> Dragon Ball Fighter Z and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom Three. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Uh, I wish they would do Marvel vs. Capcom Two. I'm not interested in Three. I played Three. I liked it a little. Yeah, bit. Three is good. It's yeah. not Two. You know what I think the thing is. Because Sony owns Evo, and I don't think you can play Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on PlayStation 4 or 5. Ooh, but can you, can... you even play it on arcade, Xbox Live Arcade? No. Because I got it on Xbox Live yeah, Arcade. Yeah, I remember you did, but, but like, I don't know if you can play it on like an Xbox Series. Did they just take it off the marketplace? Yeah. Yeah, it got delisted. I wonder if it'll show up in my... like. It should. If you own it, it should show up. Yeah. But, like, you'd have to pl- plug in the 360 to play it. Ooh. That's sad. Yeah. Good thing I... Good thing I got emulators! <laughs> because I got it running on uh, um, Naomi on oh, on my yeah. on my arcade cabinet. Uh, okay. Speaking of uh, competitive fighters. Yeah. Let's talk about the guy... <laughs> Just a regular guy yep. who got banned from uh, from Smash Tournament. Steve from Minecraft was added to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in October of 2020, and the years since, sentiment around the character has gotten worse and worse due to accusations that the character is broken and overpowered. Now, a recent discovery around a, competit- uh, a competitively advantageous glitch has brought these conversations back into spotlight. Now, it sounds like swaths of Smash Bros. competitive scenes uh, are outright banning the character from tournaments. Steve was contentious from the start with players raising issues with his combo potential and large swaths of ranged attacks. It makes him a frustrating character to fight against and not many characters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's expansive roster act as hard act as hard counter to him. Because of this, calls to have the character banned have been ongoing since he launched. It looks like some of those people are getting their wish now uh, that a new glitch has been discovered that pushes the character from overpowered to unfair. Uh, what's the problem with Steve from Smash Brothers? In layman's terms, Steve has a glitch associated with his recoil animations that allow him to recover at a faster rate than other characters in the game, meaning he can break combos that should have otherwise that should have otherwise worked with other characters and retaliate before his opponent can even act. This isn't an int- this isn't an intentional part of the character's tool set, but rather an unfortunate tech workaround. That worked in the character's favor. Despite this, Smash Ultimate is no longer being uh, is no longer receiving balance updates from Nintendo. So competitive organizers are left with two options: Do you ban the strategy, or do you ban the character? The logistics of banning the strategy are complicated. If you choose to let players continue using Steve in competitive tournaments that don't allow players to willfully use his tech, moderating matches where the character is used becomes a massive time commitment. It requires the players to save and replay. It requires the players to save a replay of the exchange and for the organizers to view and verify that the Steve player is breaking the rules and then ultimately make the call on the legality of the play. While these types of calls can be made more easily during in person tournaments, though pulling away from an organizer is always interrupting something else at the event. Uh, doing them in an online setting becomes much more complicated. These replays have to be uploaded or streamed in ways much more time-consuming than having an organizer walk over to the players in question at the game setup. Because of this, some tournament organizers have made the call to just ban Steve entirely rather than devoting valuable time and resources into micromanaging a specific character. Yeah, so... Th- I I saw the type of tech that it that it that it does. Uh-huh. Uh, it just makes it so you, there's no hit stun at all. You're just yeah. immediately back into fighting um, after you get hit. I saw then somebody use Smash Four, uh, 
and find the exact same tech with Diddy Kong. So it's like a thing that yeah. is just around. It just so happens they discovered it with, with, with Steve. When I first played Steve, I was like, this character sucks. Uh, I'm not worried at all. And then people figured him out. And now he is just a thorn in the side of, yes. of, of Smash. He is just a nuisance. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's very unfair yeah. <laughs> how, how he plays because like, you can't play the game normally as Steve. You have to exploit shit. Because he's yeah. a shitty character that has a lot of exploits. And you right. have to utilize all of those wacky, wild yeah. exploits. Um, and one of them now is fucking with it so you don't get hits done at all. Yeah. Uh, which could ruin the game. And uh, I can understand why they would want to ban him. How widespread is the ban? Uh, Bernard's Loop, a data organizer for the Smash community, has compiled a data uh, has compiled data around the current stance most states have taken on Steve. At the moment, there doesn't seem to be a ton of consensus yet um, about how hard organizers are coming down on the character. However, several are at least putting some restrictions on players using him, such as allowing him in local tournaments but not state tournaments. Despite this, Hungrybox notes in his video that the coin box making the ban uh can be seen as a blueprint for others to follow and that time will tell how far reaching this will become so bernard's loop has a steve legality map <laughs> that just shows where he's banned and where you can still play as steve uh i have it up on screen yes. this exact thing happened with hero with the with the dragon quest hero guy yeah uh when hero was launched because his problem was all of his moves are rng based and you have the potential to one shot people yeah um that ended up being nothing. Uh, you can still play as Hero in, I think, every tournament now. Uh -huh. Because Hero is just a bad character. <laughs> he's just he's just an okay character uh, that has some RNG. The problem is he can potentially one-hit kill, but he could also potentially blow himself up by accident. Yeah. So, like, there's... It's it's not an advantage to play as hero, right. I, I wouldn't say. Uh, whereas with Steve, you can learn to just really break and glitch out the game. Yeah. To 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 your advantage, so I could totally see why they would do this. I think instead, what they should do is fucking release a patch. Yeah. Because I'm not going to tournaments. I'm playing <laughs> online and shit, and I don't want to play against just a broken yeah. Steve. I mean. I don't know though, because it seems like Nintendo is like done with the game. Like, yeah, I is, know. And when Nintendo is done with it, like they're done with the game, so they're gonna move on. Like this is the game we made for you. Enjoy it, nerds. And I mean, they have been pretty on top of things, surprisingly. Like when yeah. the, the patches that they release for Smash seem to uh, have some pretty good balancing fixes, uh, depending on what users are are, are are depending on how people are playing certain characters yeah so it's just going to take a long time for them to actually implement one of those patches unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, i'm not too worried i don't think even if they don't ban steve at these tournaments i don't think he's gonna fucking you know go crazy yeah um but it's just upsetting when people find a tech like this and then exploit it online when you try and have a, a good yeah. time Anyway, uh, I say ban him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got notifications, I think. We got Seasoul with the 29 months. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And Riser with the 18 months. Um, now we got Square Enix CEO and blockchain advocate steps down. Uh, Square Enix president Yososuke Matsudo uh, could be replaced as early as June. Earlier today on March 3rd, Square Enix board of directors has announced a proposed change in the uh, representative director of the company the proposal from the board is that current head Yo uh, yosuke Mats uh, matsuda step down and current square enix director takahashi kiru uh take over in the role of president square enix's shareholders will come together to vote on the plan change at some point in june 2023 while there's no guarantee that matsuda will actually be replaced with kiru uh all signs are pointing to a change thanks to square enix's board of directors kicking off the process the proposed change comes after a series of high-profile disappointments under Matsuda. Marvel's Avengers seems to have been a disappointment for both Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics, 
leading to development leading to development ending on the game later this month while Forspoken, which launched back in January, was generally met with middling reviews and a lukewarm reception from players at large, uh, well, with its developer, Luminous Productions, being absorbed back into Square Enix. Additionally, Matsuda's major initiative over the past few years has been a pivot to blockchain technology and NFTs, something that's drawn the ire of Square Enix fans all over the world. Uh, for, the, uh, for all the planning and funding the initiative from Matsuda has received, it has yet to turn a profit for the company. Square Enix's financial results in, uh, in November 2022 showed a dip in the first half of the 2023 fiscal year, with Final Fantasy XIV generally carrying the company in sales. The company announced disappointing sales uh, for Dragon Quest X uh, and Live Alive, right? Right, Kevin? <laughs> no, it's Live Alive. Live Alive. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the dumber sounding one. Okay. Uh, the company announced disappointing sales for Dragon Quest X and Live Alive, both of which actually fell short of sales of Near Replicant and Outriders the year prior. Uh, whether Matsuda does end up departing Square Enix in June remains to be seen, but it's clear the company has been uh, in a bit of a turbulent time as of late. So what did he do specifically with NFTs? He just... He, he wanted to start... Uh, he wanted Square Enix to get basically get into the NFT and blockchain okay. game. He wanted to start incorporating them into games. He wanted to start offering them outside of games. He was a big... Big proponent of this scam. So it depends on, uh, like, like I think a lot of CEOs during the NFT craze uh, voiced interest in it. Yes, because they're CEOs. They got a. They see a thing that yeah. everybody's talking about. They're and it's, they it's a way to make money. They're gonna yeah. try to. I, I do know that Matsuda was like really gung ho about it. Like, right. He really wanted to like go forward with it and despite the fact that the company invested all this money into it there has been no sign of profit on it and he's also like like they said he's been he was the, like part of this uh, marvel avengers initiative which like was a big loss for the company because the game did not do well it was right. very expensive to make very expensive to maintain um in addition to again forspoken did came out and didn't like the world on fire in fact it was routinely mocked yes I th yeah, I think Square has not been. Uh, they, there's been some strange things going on. There. Yeah, the games I mean, have been you know mediocre, and uh, they sold off like basically all of their Western uh, companies to embrace their group. Yeah, there's a lot of question marks going yeah. on, and I mean the guy stepping down might even be. It might add to that weirdness. Yeah, so, I mean something's it, up. It doesn't sound like he's gonna be like voluntarily stepping down. It sounds like. They want him to go. Oh. And this is how they're going to do it. <laughs> they're going to vote on whether or not to kick him out. I think they're selling off. I, th I still think that they're you gearing up to be sold. Yeah. I mean, probably. That that still seems like the most likely event. So, since we're bringing up blockchain stuff, I, oh, want, I want to talk about Dr. Disrespect's blockchain game. Because he tweeted... Uh, yesterday, I think mm -hmm. he tweeted, imagine trying to extract with an item you discovered worth a hundred thousand dollars on the chain. Think about entertainment value as a viewer, let alone player. A new PVP experience is upon us. And then he says the concept of digital collectibles in an online game is so exciting to me, especially an extraction type game. People saying scam and ugh are just brain dead headline followers. S same people that spend a ton on skins for an annual release game. Same skins everyone has too. So he is talking about how exciting it would be if you're streaming a game uh, and you have you find like a hundred thousand dollar item. Mm -hmm. and you need to save the item by reaching a certain point without dying something like that okay you know, and and other players can attack you and steal the item from you that would be really cool yeah i think that would be cool absolutely zero reason for it to be blockchain related yeah you have uh, he he respond he's defending it and responding to other is. people uh, somebody said, I don't understand the value of having a digital item being stored client side on a blockchain versus an item being stored server side, i.e. CSGO skins. Do you think you could elaborate on why the value of blockchain items exceeds uh, traditional means, which is exactly what I was going to fucking say. Yeah. Uh, multiple games slash platform functionality. Imagine having a digital collectible that has functionality in a completely different game that comes out seven years later. 
the blockchain has zero cross platform the cross platformness yeah. is not blockchain related at all it's the digital item yeah. the digital item still needs to be coded in the new engine that you're going to carry it over to the blockchain doesn't help with that yeah that's not an yeah. excuse no it's it it it's literally ju- it literally is a money making scam yes it's all it is it's yeah. all it's ever been no matter how many times people like report it and beat the drum, there's still going to be pe- people like Dr. Disrespect, like Logan Paul, like all these other people who are getting into the NFT game who want to basically make more money for themselves. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. So at any time you see somebody advocate, you know, NFT, I found out that most people who, like who say like, "Oh, we're gonna do something with blockchain technology," don't really understand it. Him, he's yeah, he exactly. fucking doesn't understand it. Yeah, they're just using it because it's new technology. You're supposed to use the newest technology. It it, so. it just that's what it is. Is that it's the new technology? Yeah. There's absolutely no. It's not even beneficial uh, if you're trying to make money off of your fan base. Yeah. In this case. You're making a game. It's not even beneficial to make it a blockchain game. Yeah. Just fucking make the skins server side, and yeah. and if you can steal the money from your from your users that way. Like it doesn't need to be like that. Yeah. You got World of Warcraft mounts that yeah. are hundreds of th- dollars, you know, yeah. thousands of dollars, yeah. and they're unique and people love those and want those. The CS:GO skins, I think, is the best example. Mm-hmm. So there's no reason to make it. Uh, blockchain related at all there's no yeah. reason to involve crypto at all it doesn't make any sense yeah um somebody in the chat uh extra rye says regular games equal money goes to devs on blockchain you own whatever you acquire at least that's what they say true ownership concept except no because a cut of it goes to the devs yeah so it you could just do that in the game and if you want, if your uh, if your biggest argument is that you're gonna transfer it to future games or mm-hmm. other games, it's you still need to do that on the development side. The blockchain doesn't help at all. The only thing the blockchain helps is keep a track of where the the sales go, mm-hmm. and you can just do that on your development anyway. It doesn't need to be a blockchain thing. Uh, Sly Cooper fan says we already have we can already transfer our Pokemon from the DS games all the way up to the Switch games, and they're not NFTs. We don't need this NFT <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's a good. Point. There you go. Hey Abe, thanks for the raid. Thank you. Hello. Hey. Welcome. It's all a scam until single one proves otherwise. True. Yeah. Yeah. Show me one yeah, that's not none a of them scam. have proven otherwise. <laughs> Oh, it's like, just it's it's very frustrating because I I think that is a cool concept to like come across something in a game that's high value yeah. and then you have to hold on to it like a football and cross the finish line. That that's really cool. That is cool, but you know, not like this. No, no, <laughs> not it's like this. again, the blockchain doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You don't have to put that functionality in there. Yeah, no. It's just CS ghost skins, World of Warcraft mounts, mm-hmm. you know? And then other people brought up other things. Like, what about uh, people who, like, hack the game and then you have a $100,000 item yeah. and somebody steals it from you? Like, that's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Meta Sessions says, Bob, you're describing EVE Online. I know it exists. <laughs> that's why I'm so pissy about it. Because there's literally no reason for for this. It's not a pyramid scheme, though. It's a trapezoid. <laughs> uh, Okay. Let's move on. Wolf Among yeah. Us Two is delayed. Wow. Yeah. Uh, f- this is a this is a big deal. Uh, f- I didn't even know that they were still making games. Uh, f- well, Telltale Games reformed. Okay. And from like the ashes of the old Telltale Games. Uh, Telltale Games has announced that its long-awaited sequel to The Wolf Among Us Two is being pushed out of 2023 in an effort to avoid crunch and team burnout, as well as accommodate a move from Unreal Engine Four to Five. Speaking to IGN, uh, Telltale Games CEO Jamie Otley uh, explained that the team has made the choice for a number of reasons, but primarily to avoid burnout or shipping an unfinished game. Making games is difficult, and they need to and they need time to be right. He said, and it doesn't do and it doesn't do any of us any good to ship something that is not ready. Otley explains that, like many other game studios, the reestablished uh, Telltale Games had struggled with the challenges inherent 
to building a studio during the COVID-19 pandemic after being resurrected by LCG Entertainment in 2019 following the shutdown of the original Telltale. Telltale unveiled The Wolf Among Us 2 at the Game Awards the following December, but the studio was still in the very early stages with, game, with the game in pre-production and explicitly not using any previously developed material. And the, new least, uh, and the new studio was roughly two years away from being fully staffed. While at the time it made sense to announce early to help secure funding and support for the new initiative, Otley admits that Otley admits that had he known then about other coming factors like the pandemic, he may not have made the same decisions. Since then, he continues, The Wolf Among Us 2 has been proceeding well, but recently Telltale made the decision to switch from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal 5. It's a move that Otley says happened because Unreal 5 has a number of interesting features that may, many on his team, specifically engineers and artists, feel are worth the effort. But he admits that means redoing quite a bit of work that was originally done in Unreal 4. With all this in mind, Otley says that there, uh, there would have been only two ways to meet the 2023 release window. One option would have been to ship something unfinished, which is perhaps obviously off the table. The other option would be to crunch, a problem that reportedly plagued the original Telltale games before its shuttering. Otley is an eminent is animate that their version of Telltale simply won't do that. Wolf Among Us 2 will be an episodic release as its predecessor was, but unlike many other Telltale titles, it's being developed all at once. So when episode 1 hits, all the other episodes will, will already be complete. Uh, it is now on the docket for 2024, but Telltale does have one major release this year, The Expanse, a Telltale series which it's making in partnership with Deck 9 Games. Telltale also has a third unknown title in the uh, very early development. So the original Telltale games was notorious for always being under the gun, always crunching. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't do all their, they didn't finish their episodic games all at once. They would do one episode and then it would be, it could be months before the next episode came out. They were also notorious for using a very old proprietary engine that just didn't work after the first, not even after, uh, from before The Walking Dead came out. Like, they've been using that since the very beginning and just yeah was aging very poorly and never switched over. Yeah, The Walking Dead popped off and then they just just buried that engine. Just yeah, they just, it into just the ground. pushed it like to its, ab The Walking Dead pushed it to its absolute limits and then they just kept pushing it beyond yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so it seems like this is a concerted effort to not make the same mistakes of the past mm -hmm. by using a well-known engine like Unreal, like a reliable engine like Unreal, by delaying games, by trying their best not to crunch. Uh, I do think that the move from four to five is like a very because like that means they got to redo redo a lot. It's not just a matter of you know file save as Unreal Five. They got to basically redo the whole game now, yeah. which sucks. I mean, unless Unreal does have like a port over feature, but I doubt it. No. Yeah. I mean, they could develop something, that, but they have to develop it. So yeah. it's going to be work no matter what. Yeah. So, I mean, it sucks. I know people are looking forward to The Wolf Among Us 2. I haven't played the first one yet, but I'm sure it's very good. I have it. I should get around to it eventually. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, I think it's interesting and good that... You know, they're trying really hard to not be the old Telltale. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's plow through these last two things. Hogwarts Legacy PS4 and Xbox One versions delayed yet again. And I'm going to assume the Switch version is right there with them. Well, apparently the Switch version has not been delayed. But that's coming later. L like, way later. Yes. So I think that there's still time for that to just be canceled. I don't even think yeah, it's going to happen true. at all. Uh I'll read the Twitter post. Yeah, We're overwhelmed with gratitude from the response of Hogwarts Legacy from around the globe. The team is working hard to deliver the best possible experience on all platforms, and we need more time to do this. Hogwarts Legacy will launch on PS4 and Xbox One May 5th this year. The Switch version was the um, this is later in the article. The Switch version was the only version. The Switch version only received an official release date back in late 2022. It remains to be seen whether or not it manages to hit the target, even if the significantly more powerful hardware of the Sony and Microsoft is proving to be such. An optimization challenge for the developers. Uh, so one of the top replies to this tweet is a guy saying frame drops on PC with specs much higher than required is really bad, like 140 to 145 kind of drops. And then Warner Brothers Games support responded. Thanks for reaching out. 
<laughs> they like to help. Uh, and I'd like to say that our friend Jerry uh, has a brand new beefy gaming computer and he started playing Hogwarts Legacy and he, the game crashed on him 30 times in the first day. So <laughs> I think that, yeah, this game is uh, not optimized well. I'm looking at this game. Well, first of all, Warner Brothers like, has a history of releasing bad PC versions of their games. Arkham Knight, Mortal Kombat I was, 11. I was thinking this. that too. And this is like a weird new developer, isn't it? Like their their previous games are like mobile games. Well, no, this um, this game uh, Avalanche Studio did Disney Infinity. Because <laughs> there's multiple Avalanche Studios. Yes, this is the this is the Disney Infinity Avalanche Studio. This is not the Just Cause Avalanche Studio. Okay, okay, okay. That Avalanche Studio did Mad Max, which is also a Warner Brothers game. Okay. So it's very confusing. All right, it's very confusing. Um. What I'm trying to get, what's interesting to me is that they're still trying to put out the Xbox One, PS4, and Switch version. This is the same studio that canceled Gotham Knights on Xbox One and PS4 okay. because they wanted to focus on the PS5 and Xbox Series versions. Also the same studio, Warner Brothers, again, uh, canceled the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions of Mortal Kombat 10 so that they can do the PS4 and Xbox One version. Right. The Warner Brothers has no problem canceling last gen versions of games mm -hmm. if they can't get it to work right. I'm guessing because Harry Potter still makes all the money despite everything, they are gonna put these games out no matter what. And I don't think they're gonna come out if if Hogwarts Legacy is already rough on current systems, these games are gonna be dog shit yeah no PS4 they were gonna have a Xbox cyberpunk one. issue for and sure. do not play it on switch then i think that they have major issues and warner Bros. is like it's coming out it's coming you, out you better come out yeah you better do it and we're gonna yeah we're gonna see some major problems yeah they finally so do. i mean i feel like we've said all we can say about this stupid fucking game yeah um we'll say it again when the game comes out in a yeah shitty. well i'll say it right now don't get it on PS4 and Xbox One or Switch because yeah. it's not going to work well. And if you absolutely have to get it on PS5 and Xbox One, steal it. <laughs> that was a good time to point out that Wood rated us. Hello, hey. yeah, we'll, we'll play Valorant, but I got to <laughs> film a video later. God, I'm going to be up all night. Yeah. I got the electrician coming at 8 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why would you do that to yourself? They do it. That's when that's <laughs> when they operate, dude. All right, so just don't sleep tonight. Oh, I'll sleep. It's just going to suck. Yeah. Uh, we got one more article to read. Yes. Uh, on Twitter, uh, McDo former McDonald's corporate chef Mike uh, Harkatz showcased that Microsoft sent them an Xbox Series S that's part of a super secret project. While it may be totally unrelated, it's intriguing to note that the Xbox Series S toaster just recently leaked. Oh, there was a toaster? What? I gotta That's see that. That's more interesting than this. Hello, Woods people. Uh, you know me. This is Will. This Hi. is my other podcast. Yeah. This is the rough one. <laughs> this is the... This is the, the, uh, the... This is the one where we shoot from the hip and yeah. say, fuck a lot. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at that. A Series S toaster. Where is that? I want that. Uh, I don't currently have a toaster. I would. I mean, I heard the Series X refrigerator is very bad. Yes, I yeah. do hear that it is very. So bad. So I'm sure the toaster is no better. Here it is. Oh my god, that looks horrible. You yeah. put one piece of bread in it. That sucks. I still want it though. Yeah, I don't know why I still want it, but I still want it. I don't know. I just think it's funny that the former head chef of McDonald's is working on a project with Microsoft potentially over an Xbox. It, it, he's got a weird thing going on. When he was like the head chef at McDonald's, he like was on. He was like best friends with Rooster Teeth and would go on there yeah. to like shit all the time. So uh, he became like a gaming like industry guy because of that. So okay. maybe it is the toaster. Maybe I, I don't know. Uh, anyway. Uh, that was the last bit of news. Yes, so now we can do... Uh, can we? Can I figure it out? Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tweet of the Week time. Tweet of the Week is... <laughs> Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog on Twitter who says, they can't catch us. And That's it's the fast of us. The fast of us. Yo, I'm, I'm kind of upset they posted that because that could give Sega ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there was no audio for the tweet of the week. Oops. Oops. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, you know what? We can't leave you hanging yeah. like that. We gotta hold on. We gotta get tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. There we go.
There you go. You got it. I was playing Sonic Frontiers the other night. Mm-hmm. And I got to, I'm just, you know, sometimes you'll like run around the open zone, as they call it. And Sonic will just stop and just like talk. Mm-hmm. There's one part where I'm like walking, like walking around and all of a sudden he stops and he goes, I need to save you, Tails. I miss having you by my side. I miss these adventures we have. And I'm sitting there and like, <laughs> I've complained about the tone of this game like the entire time. And it, that just like snapped me. I'm like, this game, this story sucks. This <laughs> this dialogue sucks. This is I awful. love that though. I, like, I love that I, shitty cringe like, I am enjoying, stuff. I am enjoying like the gameplay of Sonic Frontiers. I'm genuinely enjoying it. But I fucking hate this self-serious, overly epic I drama. like that. I, I like can't. that, but I don't like that it stopped the game to do it. it. Oh my god. Like every time I have to talk to somebody, it's like, do you remember those adventures we had? Yeah. It was really rough back there. I can't believe an entire civilization died just to protect themselves. We will avenge them. We'll make sure their deaths aren't in vain. Make sure you can keep up. Gotta go fast. <laughs> God damn it. Well, like, I miss, I like, I've said this before, like, Generations and Colors and even, like, Lost World were written by the Happy Tree Friends guys. Get them back to write <laughs> Sonic games. I know Ian Flynn writes Sonic comics, and he's done some good ones, but for fuck's sake. The, the, Sonic also tweeted another one uh, the other day, and it's literally just, the, it just says, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What happened or Am what's I not going on? Following over there? him anymore because I didn't see that. It's it's easy to miss. It's one word, <laughs> and there's just a period after. Uh, he's been on some shit over there. Yeah, he's always been on shit. Uh, all right. Now we'll talk to you people. We ran really late today. We'll talk to you oh, guys. Yeah, we did. And uh, I also have an unboxing to do. Okay. So we'll do that while we talk to you people. First, we'll start off with people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Well, actually, first, let me open this. This is the th- now the third time I'm getting the Joy-Con uh, replacement. Oh, the Gully Kit ones? The Gully Kit Joy-Con yeah. replacement. This time, though, it came with a letter Okay. from the, 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 the Amazon seller. It's in Comic Sans. <laughs> Oh, no, it's in Marker Felt. I'm sorry. This is Jim from production team at Amazon. Seller Aikens. Also, exclusive agent of Ape doing Gully Kit and Retroflex. The package is the newer version of the Gully Kit NS40 Hall Joystick for Nintendo Switch. The newer version is no click jump noise issue and gap issue. I remember the gap gap issue they have something specifically uh spawn wave talked about mm-hmm. i don't know what the n- click noise jump is so these are newer versions now so if you okay. buy them now you should get the newer version okay guess, is is all that is important to, to know and this other package that i have is uh read this oh. <clears throat> hi bob my name is james i would I really enjoy your informative videos and have recently started binge listening to you, your and Woods podcast to get me through my long commute. Well, really enjoyed the recent. You're on the other one. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. You got well. (laughs) I have a small business and I started a few years ago and I'm now beginning to focus on growing it. Wood actually bought one of my three printed items off Etsy from a few years ago uh, for one of his weird Nintendo switch accessories videos. I'm trying to up my game a bit and focus on higher quality products. I particularly need to uh, to thank you for your design labs video where you alerted me to the fact that you can now customize elite Ooh. controllers. Aside from Ooh. aside from being an awesome controller, I think using it in photos has really helped uh, help them pop and giving a boost to my social website and Etsy store. I wanted to send you one of my items to say thank you for all the videos and podcast content of yours I have enjoyed over the years. I thought your elites could I thought your elites could do with a nice uh, place to sit on your desk, so I wanted to send you. One of my Elite 2 uh, controller stand displays. Uh, I've added your name and logo t- uh, onto it and I hope you like it. So the company looks like it's Foxwood. That's like pretty the cool. Casino. Uh, like the casino. And yeah. look at that. Ooh, that that, that is very that nice. That is very nice. And I guess uh, I guess this magnets onto it? Yeah. Uh, oh, so you put the charging block yes. there. That's cool. I like this. Uh, he has a picture of it right here. Uh, I also make switch related. I'm still reading. I also make switch related uh, products. I sent Wood some of these uh, with his logo on it. 
I am on Instagram at, at foxwood.creative. If you want to check out some of my other stuff, please don't feel any obligation to post about the stand. This is a gift, and I hope you enjoy it. If you do have any feedback, I would love to hear. Um, thanks again for all the cool content, and hope you enjoy the stand. Well, thank you very much. It is very cool. How, now, how does it go? Uh, is this right? These are not in the picture. Oh. Oh, they're on the bottom. They go on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, so it's like that, I guess. Yeah. So you yes, just... yes, yes, yes. That there makes a go. lot of sense. So it displays better. There Ooh. you go. That's cool. Fancy. I like that. That's really cool. His website is uh, foxwoodcreative.co.uk. Very cool. Do you have an Elite controller? I do not. Because somebody well, wouldn't get me one. No, it was fucking like $250. Oh. Oh. Boo-hoo. Get him one controller. Then he shut the hell up about it. Um... All right, well, thank you very much, Foxwood. Um, I will uh, display this somewhere. That's cool because you put the deep pad, yeah, you put the little yeah. thumbsticks there and stuff. That's nice. That was very nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, we got to read last week's Wolf Den podcast. Yes. Caleb Fox says, uh, as a Gen Zer born in 2003, I can confirm that Harry Potter is still insanely popular, although people only do care about the original books. I get asked my Hogwarts house as often as I get asked my star sign. Oh, God. No. I guess, I guess, it, I guess that's like being a Gen 1-er in Pokemon. Like, you only care about... You're a big Pokemon fan, but you only care about the original Pokemon game. But I feel like that's different because, like... You know, po- you know, Pokemon at least tries to reinvent themselves every generation. Harry Potter is just, like, the main books. Yeah. At like that time. Well, there's Pokemon fans that would argue that they just keep reusing the original I guess. Pokemon. Yeah. And I, I guess it makes sense that like Gen Zers would also be like into Harry Potter because like there's always crossover between mm-hmm. like generations and stuff. Uh Robert Taylor says, I've heard a lot of casual watchers tell me 2016's Suicide Squad is better than the new one. Hardcore fans love the new one way more. This has me divided on which to watch. Um don't you gotta watch both? No. Okay. No, you don't. Um, I mean, you watch the first one gives mild context to the second one, but like barely any. I watched the first one and did not watch the second one. The second one is a lot better. I did not like the first one. The, se- the second one is like night and day compared to the, the first mm-hmm. one. I would highly recommend. And then watch Peacemaker because Peacemaker is great. Um, the first, the first one just like you know, it, it has a very ugly aesthetic to begin with. And then it like had a very notorious like post production where they edited they edited it completely to shit behind the director's back, but like still telling the director they were doing that. Mm-hmm. So the end result was like a very like a very messy film. Um and then the second one, there was a new regime and they're like, James Gunn, do whatever the fuck you want. Mm-hmm. And he did. And now he runs the thing. Uh, Melon says, damn, Bob, you should play the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV. I think I saw someone drinking coffee in that once. You'd love it. There you go. God damn it. You mean that... You, I swear, you called it an MMORPG. I thought it was a JRPG. <laughs> a JMMORPG. <laughs> William says, Hogwarts Legacy proves that most people don't care about someone being upset over X, Y, and Z. Capitalism reigns supreme. Just play the game. Your $5 in the pocket of the author won't make a difference. All people are awful. <laughs> very cynical way of thinking. It is a very cynical way of thinking of things. Not entirely wrong. I think, you know, bringing attention to issues is not a bad thing. Like no, making- no, it's when you're violently bringing attention to the issue. Like, like there's nothing wrong with bringing up somebody's, you know, history or why you don't agree with a specific person or something yeah there is something which we talked about there is something wrong with uh imposing your beliefs onto other people unwillingly yeah you know and creating like a like a hate mob exactly so it's all everything in moderation yeah uh stale lemon says do you prefer left wolf or right wolf to which is replied my favorite is the australian one that was a, a, apparently an exchange. I, I got it. Yeah. It's fucked yeah. up. I don't like it. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, all right. Now we're in the chat. Yes. Make it good. Make it good. Make it better than whatever the hell I just read. Uh, whether you play Hogwarts Legacy or not, or violently attack random streamers will not change the fate of trans rights. 
It's true. Which again, true. That's why I tell you, steal the game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bob, Open EMU was amazing. Super easy installation and everything, but getting ROMs is a pain in the ass. Who knew piracy was so difficult? It's not. Just Google the name of the game, ROM, and then it's right there. <laughs> you do have to navigate There a might bunch be of, like a tricky thing here or there, but like... There might be some weird, wacky download links that look like download links but aren't. Yeah. But you, you'll, you'll be fine. Once you know what to do. Use a VPN, you'll be fine. Yeah. Like, have you never pirated a movie before? It's the same principle. <laughs> There's one website that people use, Verm something. Somebody write it. Don't don't link it in the chat, but write the name of it in the yeah. chat. Ver, Ver or something. Vim's Lair? Vim's Lair, that's there the one. Go. Vim's Lair is the, the one. Although I don't do that, I just literally Google the name of the game. Yeah. Uh, Otaku Sam 96. I want, I want, uh, I'm wanting to get an N64. Never had one growing up. Uh, were you... Uh, where would you suggest looking and what price do you think is honest? eBay. And whatever the rate is on eBay because that uh, the price fluctuates wildly. I don't know. I don't know if I would recommend eBay because a lot of times people set the price uh, too high, mm -hmm. like artificially high. Yeah. It's because they want to like maximize their profits. I think you might be better off looking at like uh, retro game stores or conventions or like maybe even like Amazon Marketplace or Craigslist because those are usually cheaper and they're local. So you can just go to the place and pick it up. Yeah, if you could physically look at it. But a lot of retro game stores have been marking things up. That's true. Also. And even at conventions. I don't think eBay is ideal either, but I think uh, considering all the options, eBay is pretty decent. Yeah. For the for the system itself and one controller, I would not pay more than sixty four dollars. That's that's not that's nothing. I know, that's not a lot of money. I, I know, I know, because you got to think about it. It's well over twenty years. It's like thirty years old almost. It's like yeah. twenty five years old. It's you know people have moved on. Games are coming out on more on you know you can play on sixty four games on the switch and even on xbox right now so there are other ways to play a lot of the best games on this system to physically own an n64 doesn't really make sense unless you're an enthusiast mm -hmm. realistically you're probably gonna wind up spending like 150 dollars on a nintendo 64 with like a couple of accessories and maybe a game like i just that. found one on ebay for 100 bucks and yeah. i think that is a pretty decent deal that's the cheapest buy it now i've seen yeah and so, that looks like an official controller you got to find one with a million pictures. Yeah. Uh, and hope that they're not going to screw you. This one looks a little dirty. Yeah. But, like, that's not a big deal. Uh, th that's all you could really do. Oh, yeah. this one. Ha oh, wait, is this Japanese? Oh, uh, the jumper pack. That's not. That's nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's. That's. I mean, I think $100 is a decent deal. Uh, they have ones up here for, like, upwards of $200. And that, you don't want anything to do yeah. with that's way too much money and you also want to make sure you're getting the actual n64 controller because a lot of them are selling them like dk oldies is selling N64s. i was actually just looking up like just to laugh what dk oldies is selling and they have an... i did get a honey coupon on dk oldies oh, yeah? for, for an n64 there you go but it was insanely priced uh the fan favorite n64 mario zelda pack comes with two controllers uh, they look like official controllers. In no, the does it ha does it say Nintendo? Because the the off brand ones look like official ones. Well, so they have another they have another set. It's called the N sixty four Player Pack. It's acceptable. It's one hundred and ten dollars, and the picture is some weird ass third party controller. Right. The one I was talking about has controllers that look like N sixty four controllers. Yeah, these are not real N sixty four controllers. Okay. Because uh i yes okay so i don't know why it's crossed out but controller oh, upgrade see, yeah substitute to original and 60 controls. bucks yes that adds to your price yes um yeah this comes with so this pack comes with mario 64 ocarina of time two controllers three hundred dollars yeah that's way insane. too much money that's insane way too much that's money. why i'm saying i i don't hate ebay i think that 
as long as you know what you're getting and you know what you should be paying for it and you look at all of the pictures, I think you can run across a pretty good deal. Yeah. Now, you can get screwed because I did buy a Game Boy from eBay uh, mm. and the buttons didn't work. Right. But that was easy to fix. So there might be issues like that. A lot of these sellers sell a lot of shit on eBay. They have a, a high rating and they don't want to lose their high rating. So yeah. if, if an issue like that happens, you could be like, hey, the fucking thing doesn't work and I send it back. And usually they'd be like, mm. fine. So just do your research and avoid DK oldies. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, always look at the seller's reputation on eBay too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jim Slatter up. Uh, glad to see my recent era forum Metroid Prime remake topic got a fun insert in last week's uh, Nintendo podcast. Oh my god, Jim Slatter s- Slatter sup. Uh, hey. Is uh. Was that the topic from like 2020? Was that the old like leak? Was that you? Uh, it's hard to keep up with all these Metroid Prime. I know we also talked about that on the Nintendo yeah. podcast too. You get your 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 uh, recent era post from many moons ago did yeah. the rounds. Um, any other leaks you got? For us? Yeah, <laughs> where's uh where's Echoes and Corruption? Yeah. Um. The one on that site that had the one controller and system was 166. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't, 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 do that. don't do that. I just found one that's a buy it now on eBay for 100 bucks. You should get that. That's what I'm saying right now. Uh, Su- Sui Kagura says, Bob, out of these two, should I get the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus? No. Or the Ambernic RG353M for mostly arcade and Saturn? You pick two random ass systems. I'm not entirely sure that Saturn's going to run good. Saturn, well, the Sega Saturn is notoriously difficult to emulate. Yeah. I don't think you're, there's a handheld out right now that can actually do Saturn emulation at all, let alone well. What is... I'm pretty sure I didn't really like the RG353M. Like, it's okay. Yeah. But for $150, uh, I wouldn't recommend that either. Sega Saturn runs pretty bad on my Ein Odin. Yeah. And that's one of the most powerful handheld emulators. So I don't know. Maybe look maybe you should be looking at the uh Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, not the 2 Plus. Maybe you want portability, I don't know, but th- th- those don't seem like great options for arcade and right. Saturn. Uh Ivy Soros says, "Bob, where can I get good condition 3DS?" And what price is good for it? You can still buy them on Amazon. They're a million dollars. Yeah. Don't don't buy retro consoles on Amazon anymore. eBay. People are yeah. saying in the chat, Mercari. Uh, I've never tried it, but it might be good. Yeah. There's another one that Elliot uses all the time. 3DSs are, though, are like still like a couple hundred bucks. Like yeah. Bucks for like a good quality one. Yeah. Um. Quick, drop a Switch 2 rumor right at the end of the podcast to get people to tune in next time. <laughs> it will not only use Switch-style carts, but it will also feature a full-size disk drive. Whoa. But they're like UMDs, but for Blu-rays? So it's in like a case? No, it's just an actual disk drive, like a Walkman. Yeah. Yeah, but, but not- you got to put you gotta put in... No, like no, a U- no. No, 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 not in a UMD case. Just, just the disc. Okay. You just put in there. Okay. Um. I uh, oh, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, somebody said they got a 3DS. That's probably not a bad idea because people yeah. are probably trying to offload 3DSs right now. You, you, that they're, they're not that a old. lot of game deals on Facebook Marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody also mentioned that uh, Retroid is now selling grips for the Pocket Three and Three Plus. Yes, I did see that. I might get one because I'm doing a video on accessories. But I literally think I just got a grip from Etsy yeah. for it. Uh, okay. Um, we got to go. Okay. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whatever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you can do that as well we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolfton podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate 
and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Uh, I will be live again on Thursday. Uh, I've been doing new Super Mario Brothers ROM hacks. Ooh. The DS game Ooh. ROM hacks. And it's pretty fun. Uh, so watch me over there. Right now, uh, you can go say hello to Beta64. He's streaming. What's he streaming? Tomodachi Life. Okay. Uh, 3DS game. Interesting. Uh, okay. Well, I'll see you all on Thursday. Thanks for being here. Say hello to Beta64 or I'll kill you. Goodbye. Bye.